Hi everybody, this is Father Moki and today is January 7th, 2021 and this is the first uh, 2021 edition of Chicken Chat and Happy New Year everybody. To begin the year, we do have a verse from the Bible, Matthew 6, 34. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Uh, as I say that, I um, think it's poignant uh, because we're actually taping on Wednesday and uh, there are protests uh, going on in Washington, D.C. The Capitol is in lockdown at the moment. Uh, so, um, you know, it, it is true. Today's trouble is enough for today. By the way, I didn't just pull that out of the sky, that memory verse. It is on the back of the Christmas card that we sent out to all of you. See? Right here, January memory verse. So uh, it's a good thing to commit to memory. We do have 12 Bible verses for you throughout the year uh, to, to memorize. Uh, I would also like to announce the following birthdays this week. There are many. Uh, Nobles Dagulo, Arthur Latayada, Bessie Evangelista, Trinidad Basig, Magdalena Gamatero, Derek Daguro, James Crow, Mary Grace Denong, and Florendo Dagulo. Happy birthday to all of you. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> no anniversaries this week. Uh, we um, normally uh, send out a bulletin and, and have uh, people on the pastoral care list that we we ask you to pray for uh, because we've gone back to virtual worship I, I would just like to ask you to hold each of these people in prayer uh, with me as I say their names for you um, it's it's a it's a big list but um, not insurmountable so uh, please please uh, hold these people in prayer Eric Paula Jim, Beatrice, Donna, Philomena, Liberato, Christopher, Alberta, Joseph, Sana, Bill, Jim, Judy, Nana Catalina, Nana Maggie, Nana Shirley, Nana Dolores, Nana Jacinta, Juanita, Dixie, uh, not the camera woman Dixie, it's a different Dixie. Honore, Kevin, Elmer, Sparky, Sonia, Pilar, Marilyn, Ilsun, uh, mother of uh, Michelle Akana, Randall, Peter Pereira, Patsy, Aline, Epi, Barbara, Charlesta, Tomo, Christy, Jay, Christ, and Blandina. Uh, we hold all these people uh, throughout our prayers and in our thoughts through, throughout the week. Um, I, I would like to apologize to the worship committee. Uh, our plan was to uh, transfer the Feast of the Epiphany to this Sunday. And then I went and I sent out the readings for the baptism of our Lord to the readers. And so uh, rather than ask them to uh, resubmit readings, I decided it would be best to simply go with the baptism of our Lord. Having said that, however, um, I would like to note that yesterday uh, was the epiphany and uh, there they, they say that there are, uh, that epiphany means manifestation so you know something something becomes known and manifest uh, to us in in the epiphany the first one being uh, there are four they say the first one being um, the the birth of Jesus uh, the second one, uh, which is uh, what is yesterday, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the third one is actually the feast that we are going to 
honor on Sunday, which is the baptism of the Lord, because it became known that this was the Son, the Beloved, with whom God was well pleased, and then the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a, a dove. And so uh, this was a manifestation and a revelation to us. The fourth is in the Gospel of John, and uh, it, it is the turning of water into wine, the first public miracle of Jesus uh, at the hands of his mother Mary, by the way. She played a uh, very definite role. Um, I, I love it. You know, the, the Bible, when we read that on Sundays, it always says, you know, and we read it like, um, and she said, do whatever he tells you, you know. Uh, I don't think that's the way she said it. I think she kind of just like got fed up and rolled her eyes um, after the, the little argument that she had with her son. And she was like, do whatever he tells you, because she knew very well um, he was going to do it, because if he didn't, or else, you know. <laughs> so I, I, I always get amused by that one. And then there's the epiphany of the three magi. Uh, and, and that was a significant epiphany because people from the outside were coming to pay homage to the Christ child. Uh, not, not just this uh, insular, exclusive uh, kind of group, but everybody. And they came from the East, uh, which basically was Asia. Uh, if you look at the geography of Israel and the Holy Land, from the East would be Asia. Um, it's said that they came from Persia, um, which is today modern-day Iran. Uh, also, uh, one of them, Kaspar, I believe, uh, if I'm wrong, you, you are free to correct me, is, is typically depicted as an African uh, person, very dark-skinned, uh, signifying to us uh, something very, very important, that nobody falls outside uh, the love of God and um, the love of Christ. Uh, very, very important to remember in, in this day and age uh, when there seems to be a lot of racial division. Uh, bishop Browning, who was the second bishop of Hawaii and who went on to become the presiding bishop, said, in this church, the Episcopal Church, there shall be no outcasts. He was very, very clear about that. And he meant that not only in terms of uh, ethnicity and uh, the color of one's skin, but he also meant that in terms of gender, sexuality, socioeconomic status. And uh, it's, it's said that really um, when uh, we, we do create outcasts, and, and the paradox of it is that when we label somebody as other and outside our group, we become the outcast uh, because that's not the will of God. And so we, we put ourselves uh, in the margins. And so we, we really have to bear in mind that there are no outcasts in this church and in the kingdom of God. and. Um, and in the realm of Christ. That is a fabulous uh, insight and epiphany uh, that, that we honor. Uh, so let's, let's all bear that in mind and embody that through our thoughts, words, and deeds. Uh, so that's, that's what I have to say about epiphany and mea culpa to the worship committee that I have to address it through chicken chat and uh, not on Sunday. But I am a very flawed individual and I make many, many mistakes. So uh, my, my apologies for that. Uh, as you know, we did go back to exclusively virtual worship uh, this past Sunday with the premiere of a seven o'clock service and the Liturgy of the Word. I made that decision in consultation uh, with the senior warden on Friday night uh, and, and asked uh, the opinion of the worship committee on Saturday. They uh, wholeheartedly uh, endorsed that decision. Uh, 
they did say they were sad about it, that, that we had to do that, but of course uh, they, they understood and supported. I really do thank uh, this congregation, Good Shepherd. I have not had a single bit of pushback or criticism for that decision, and people have been very affirmative and very supportive of that. And I am just so grateful um, that we have rallied together uh, around this cause and are doing, doing the right thing um, by the community at large and also by the worshiping community. Uh, like I said in the emergency chicken chat that I put out, uh, I really want to err on the side of caution because I would be just crestfallen if anybody came down with the virus as a result of coming to worship here. And uh, I, I am a risk taker, uh, but that's not a risk that I want to take uh, in this particular context. And we're going to be fine. Uh, we're, the, the community stays together. We're providing worship. The outreach continues. It's all good, and so um, I'm, I'm just very, very touched by the support from all of you. Uh, we're tentatively set to resume in-person worship uh, on Ash Wednesday, which is February 17th. Uh, we will keep evaluating. Uh, <coughs> please know that uh, Holy Innocence and Trinity by the Sea have also suspended in-person worship. So uh, we're, 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 you know, we're not unique. Uh, having said that, the Ka'ohana Kitchen did continue. On uh, Sunday, Louisa Loy and her family came and they provided uh, a meal of chili to, to the people. I, uh, I did go out and um, interact with a few of the folk and passed out mass. And one of, the, one of the, uh, the clients said to me, Hey, Father, what's the word for today? And I, I just sort of looked at him and, and smiled and said, Well, and which he couldn't see because I did have my mask on. Um, <clears throat> he said, uh, I said to him, The word of the day is joy. And uh, he was like, that's a good word. I really like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's fun to interact with the folks. And listen, they are so appreciative of the Ka'ohana Kitchen. I, I would like that to continue. And I, I hope that we can um, carry it out with the limitation of five people in the, in the kitchen because it's, it's critical uh, to, to the community of Wailuku. Uh, that same day, uh, I guess Mary and Joseph uh, in the pageant uh, decided that if they ever had to go to Bethlehem again or do the flight to Egypt, they were going to do it in a new car. And so <laughs> they, they showed up in a, in a beautiful new Honda, uh, which I blessed. And I was so happy, you guys, because they brought the baby with them and uh, just so sweet. And so blessed the car and uh, off, they, off they went on the flight to Egypt in their, in their brand new car. It was great. Great. Um, other than that, uh, let's see. Oh, yes, we do expect that the annual meeting will be virtual uh, this year. I'd hope to have it in person, but that's not going to be possible. So I'm looking into figuring out a way to do it via Zoom, and uh, I, I will get back to you on that. Finally, everybody. The chickens of the week today, or this week, are Hallelu 1 and 2 because they embodied Suffer the Children to Come Unto Me. I was sitting here minding my own business and Hallelu 1 and 2 came walking up to me to see if I had anything to feed them. But I didn't because you guys know that I don't feed the chickens, right? So anyway, and by the way, I do have a bone to pick with a member of the congregation who said to me, Father, how do you know that that's Hallelu 1 and 2? How do you know that it's not Hallelu 5 and 3? And brothers and sisters, I know my 
chickens. I know that that's Hallelu one and two because I'm very in touch with my chickens. And so I said to the, to the un, unnamed member of the congregation, I said, no, I know that's Hallelu one and two. What, you like beef? And they said, no, Father, we don't like beef. We like chicken. So uh, anyway, for embodying that line in the gospel that says, let the children come unto me, we name Hallelu one and two, the chicken of the week chickens of the week. And by the way, they, unlike Hallelu 3 through whatever number survived, they continue to come to church, even in their adolescence, just like so many people at Good Shepherd do. And I'm so proud of them. And they came to church with their mother, Harriet, who you will see in the picture. So congratulations, Hallelu 1 and 2, for being chickens of the week. And with that, I say God bless you, everyone. Have a great week. And Take care.